Um, hi everybody, welcome to Admin Chat. Today's Admin Chat is going to be surrounding health and well-being within the workplace and specifically for those uh, you who are event professionals, arranging meetings and events, etc. I'm David Lovett Hume, I'm the founder and CEO of Assembler. Assembler is a platform which takes the stress out of organizing events by connecting with thousands of venues and suppliers around the globe. I'm joined today by Jason Allen Scott. Hello there, thank you for joining us. Should be good to go. I'm Jason Allen Scott, I'm an event planner, I'm founder of a company called Mice Offers, which provides exclusive deals to people like yourself, people who organize events for a living. Uh, and Instafloats, which is a selection of influencers, both micro, with people like 100 to 1,000 followers who listen to them and trust them, all the way up to macro influencers with hundreds of thousands of, of followers. And we create, curate um, content, or well, three Cs, curate, create content for venues um, and destinations in the event space. I think it's probably... Um, important that we explain the acronym MICE as well. I mean, we've, yes. been, we've been involved in the events well for a long, long time. Absolutely. But just for those of you that haven't really heard of the acronym, meetings, incentives, conference, events. MICE. MICE. Um, so that's, that's a good segue into, mm. I suppose, talking about a little bit of our experience within the events industry. Fantastic. Um, so I used to own an events agency. Uh, we used to organize events on behalf of corporate customers um, all around the world from kind of small stage um, Christmas parties up to you know multiple thousand people at a conference as well. And I certainly know from personal experience mm. how stressful that can be. Yes. I mean, Jason, you, you wrote the book on this quite I've literally, I've literally written, I've written seven books. Um, event Props Handbook, uh, The Eventrepreneur, Event Props, uh, the book, um, Entrepreneurship, Consultant for Falmouth University on their master's degree in creative events. Um, I've written blogs for the biggest event read blog in the world, Event Manager's blog, Haymarket Media. Um, it's incredibly stressful. Anyone that organizes anything is stressful, right? Your name's on it, your, your neck is on the block, so to speak. People always blame the organizer, they don't blame the restaurant, they don't blame the venue, they don't blame the destination, yeah. the transportation. There's a million things that can go wrong. Uh, you're, you're supposed to behave like a, like a swan. You know, you're all graceful on top, but underneath the water, your little legs are kicking out of crazy. Kicking, yeah. um, so it's mental. It's it's a, a very high-pressured position. And like I was recently told by the incredible Lucy um, from Executive yeah. Secretary, it's something that a lot of you were thrown into. You know, I think for us, we knew what we were getting into yeah. when we said, let's organize events, where some of you people listening to this, you would thought your job would be completely different. And all of a sudden, you're told to organize a board meeting yeah. or a conference somewhere or an expo or an incentive which are really difficult, high-pressured um, projects to handle. And hopefully this will give you some things that you can use, some tools, some best practices. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've done a number of talks um, titled the PA as an event organizer. And without fail, every time that we do this panel discussion, somebody in the, in the audience stands up and says, look, I've never organized an event before, but my boss has just asked me to arrange our annual event. Where do I start? Yeah, what do you think again? It's, it's insane that you know many um, executive assistants Assistants have never had prior experience. They're just mm -hmm. being thrown this task where everyone on the face of it thinks it's easy. But interestingly, a little bit of a segue, that um, in a recent um, survey, event organizing, mm -hmm. so event professionals, has come out as the fifth most stressful job in the world behind armed forces, yep. professional services like the police, the firefighting, ambulance driving. So it just goes to show that you guys are pretty much superhuman because it's not just event organizing that you're doing, you've got to juggle this as one of the tasks that you've got. So hopefully you'll get a lot out of today's admin chat mm. where we talk about health and wellness as well. So let's, let's take away into that. Yeah. yeah. One of the things you didn't mention before is that um, you're also a fan of something called calisthenics. Calisthenics, yeah. the calisthenics and the calisthenic games. Um, health and wellness is very important to me. In the last couple of years in the event space, I have lost one friend, Arthur Somerset, who died at his desk. And um, if ever you get a chance to Google Arthur Somerset, he was just a character within the event space, started the International Life Events Association. He was bigger than life. He brought together think tanks of people to try and solve problems. And he was working on the London Olympics when he passed away. And that really brought it home to me about the importance of our job and what we're doing and the stress that we take on. I myself have an autoimmune disease. A friend of mine, Mark Charles Felstead, based in Berlin, doing a huge events over there, had a heart attack. 
um, while out and dying for about a couple of minutes and, and was brought back. And, and it kind of just constantly hit home this, this idea that if you're not working on yourself, then how can you be working for everyone else? Yeah. It's kind of like when you're in an airport, right? Or you're on a plane and they say, take the oxygen mask, put it on yourself and then put it Got on your child yourself. yourself. Yeah, first. Before you take care of it. So I started calisthenics and uh, like anything, I'm a massive believer in research and due diligence. And I wanted to find out everything I could. So I immediately did a nutrition course, I did a dietitian course, I did a personal trainer's course at my level one. Um, I did a, it was called an MWOD for those CrossFitters out there, you know what that is. I studied with the great Dr. Kelly Starrett, who trained Jason Statham, who uh, came up with the idea that your chair is probably killing you. Um, he said that it's one of the biggest problems ever. He wrote an incredible book called Desk Bound. If you've ever had a chance, make sure to read this book. Yeah. Desk Bound changed my life. I flew to Paris, I studied in Paris University. And I started getting information. I then started speaking to athletes. I traveled all over talking to professional football players, American football players, volleyball players, gymnastics, swimming, um, mobility experts, Ido Brittel, based out in Israel. And those fighting enthusiasts out there know that he was the mobility guy behind Conor McGregor. And sort of trying to find out what was missing, what were the things that linked sort of success, if you will, within health and wellness. And it turned out there were a couple of things that just kept, kept coming up. And it's only when I went to Nike headquarters in California, it's called Just Do It headquarters, which I think was a great name, um, that I realized that it can be sort of easily broken down. That it starts off with uh, your microbiome. Now, let's learn on a microbiome. Is. Is. There we go. Yeah. So there is an entire world, and let's call it for the sake of this of the simplification, germs, right? Millions and millions of bacteria and small little germs that are transported down your family line as you are born. And that sits in your gut. And your gut health, as we're learning now, is super important because it's not just the food you're putting in your mouth. But how is that food being moved, being utilized, turned into energy, into protein, into synthesis, into osmosis, into apoptosis? So the microbiome, based on your genetics, says this should go to this and this should go to this. And if you're this genetic sort of makeup, then you're better off uh, because you're probably based in Africa, if you're looking at long distances, so we know that we need more energy than someone that's perhaps uh, based in the central Europe where there'll be longer winters, so we need to sort of hold energy. And when we say hold energy, it's hold fat. And we're talking about um, having strength sort of in the Icelandic areas or the more Scandinavian areas. Yeah. So for them, it'll be more about muscle building. So there they're looking at quick protein synthesis. And the microbiome, if you will, is the greatest personal assistant or executive assistant to the human body because it's saying where to put all these things. So the first thing Nike does, or just do at headquarters with every single athlete, is do a microbiome test. They don't even start with the food. They don't even start talking about all the different things that can be done uh, with nutrition and with movement and mobility and strength and mental training, nutrition, recovery, coaching and accountability. They start right with microbiome. Where is it? What is it doing? How does it work? And now a lot of millennials out there get told you're a special snowflake. Well, it turns out we're all special snowflakes. Um, and that we all need to find out what's our gut health before we start looking at everything else. The second thing Nike does, which again blew me away, was an emotional coach. And I was like, what? What is an emotional coach? And they're like, Jason, we can feed you the greatest food there is in the world. We can train you with the greatest trainers in the world. But if you're not ready to accept yes, yeah. accountability, someone's relying on you, that you deserve the attention we're giving you, that you deserve the food. Something else I find mind blowing. Everyone did this almost prayer before they ate. And I was like, wow, is everyone sort of religious? And he went, no, he said, but we've realized through every culture that's ever existed, taking a moment to really think about this food, what's it gonna do, what's it gonna do to my body? Centering themselves, reminding themselves of the importance of it, is a ritual that obviously translates from the brain to the body to how the body performs. And I was like, that is incredible. <laughs> you know, it's, you're, sitting, you're sitting talking about this, and I, I've not heard this before. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's, it's incredible for me. Um, but it's, it's hilarious to think that I read a book of my one-year-old son recently. Right, everyone and, who's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it's a good book. It's a good book, book. yeah. Um, but actually, there's, there's a sentence which jumps out and says, if you want something to change, you have to first change you. And then that leads that. back exactly yeah. to what you're saying. Yeah. Well, one of the other things is they set up this um, a Skype with everyone. And I said, well, okay, what does the Skype guy do? Like, what is he like sort of coaching? Well, that's the emotional coach. And he does this thing where he finds out what your why is. Why are you doing it? 
Why do you want to be a quarterback? Why do you want to play football for this? Why do you want to swim? Why do you? And that's, that seems like a bit of a crazy thing. I mean, surely at this stage of the career, yeah. they're they're already professional athletes. You're just trying to get them sort of better by one percent or three percent. And again, the, the increments when you get to that level is so small. I remember saying this: oh, how, how well do you think we can do? And I was like, I don't know. What do you guys do? Fifty percent? Like, no, literally percent. If we fix them by one percent, we've done a great job for the year. And this emotional coach just says, what's your why? Why do you keep doing this? You know, if you can work out what are you doing with purpose, for purpose, yeah. it changes everything. And that, again, was mind-blowing. And I know there's a, a viral um, YouTube thing, so look it up, with Simon Sinek, and I believe it's Impact Theory with Tom Bilyeu. And he talks about the millennials, and he talks about um, this loss of, of where, what they're doing and why they're doing it. And then he talks about how if you just work out your why, everything else becomes easier. Yeah. It's that why that's so important. And that is what's calisthenics. The next big thing is we looked at all the biggest sort of fat loss, um, health, weight loss companies in the world. What did they have in common? And it was accountability. You know, um, Slimzone, Wayless, yeah. they all meet together, like AA. And they say, hey, how you doing? Oh, it's been a hard week. How's it been a hard week? Well, I didn't hit my macros. I didn't hit my calorie. I didn't do this. Okay, well, that's okay. You know, yeah. s- step on the scale. We're all going to... Clap if you if you've lost a bit of weight, and if you haven't, oh, we're going to be around you to hug you and remind you that you'll get it next week. And I thought, okay, so accountability is vitally important. Yes, yeah. this, this community, this tribe, this network, um, your network is your net worth. And it's interesting that you're talking to kind of the executive assistant network mm. here because you know they're like the athletes of yeah the of what they world, and you know one of the the closest knit communities that I've ever had any involvement with as yeah. well. Um, so I mean, you know, relating to the everyday, for instance. You know, I I can't do any of this. I'm making excuses, obviously. Uh, yeah, so I bad. Yeah, I bad. Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. um, I excuse myself. One of your old, I've got a, a thriving business that, that I run. Um, I should do exercise, but yeah. you know, relating this back to people that can't necessarily, you know, go and get the mi- microbiome, yeah. done, et cetera. The microbiome um, work done, the nutrition exactly, work yeah. done, the blood, blood glucose done. You can start right at the micro. At the literally, what is the smallest thing I can do? So um, Tony Robbins, the, the motivational speaker, the life coach, the, the motivator, the guru, uh, says, if you want someone to, to, to learn how to brush their teeth, so this is for your kid, uh, for your kid, watch it. Tell them to brush just one tooth. That's it. That's all they have to do, one tooth. Because so far, no one's ever gone and, and done one tooth, put the toothbrush down and gone to bed. They'll do the one, and I'm right there. I'll do the second one. Yeah. Oh, I've just done that one. Okay, I'll finish the side. I've done that, so I'll double up. If you start with the micro, small, yeah. very small steps. So maybe today you force yourself to sit up straight and you kind of remind yourself constantly, oh, I'm dropped a little bit. I tell guys, wear a waistcoat. It sounds ridiculous, but it's a male corset. It is, it absolutely is. Yeah. It holds you Taking in. nothing away from corsets. No, no, no. I've worn one. Probably never worn one. I, I have worn one. It's very uncomfortable. It's, it cuts up your breathing. Um, two, breathing. We did this exercise with Dr. Kelly Starrett at Paris University where he had the um, one of the coaches from Chelsea football team lift their leg up and they couldn't move their leg further up. So he had his leg right up. And he sort of asked all of our students, you know, why can't he get his leg? And the obvious answer was, it's not stretching, he's quite not flexible, forget the word, um, tight hamstrings, uh, bad hip movement. And he said, okay, we'll do the same thing, but this time I want you to breathe in for three seconds, hold it for three seconds, breathe out for four seconds. Brought the leg right back. So you just don't breathe properly. We all, all breathe very shallow. We're not even getting into the diaphragm. And we've got three diaphragms. We've got one just here, one on the lower belly, we've got one down the lower chakra. And I was like, this is incredible. He managed to do a plank. And he was like, everyone should do two minute planks. Few of us get to two minute planks. No. There we go. Yeah. Did the same thing with breathing. All of us, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes. Someone did an eight minute plank. Um, we just recently did the Calisthenic Games, 14th November in London, Factory 45. And we, we did the same thing. We planked them first on the old closed circuit, you know, on your elbows, yeah. on your legs, bum straight. Then did it with your hands up on the shoulders. And a lot of the ladies were going, I haven't got the upper body strength. Yeah, so calisthenic games. Yes. Explain what, because calisthenics games wasn't for athletes. No, it's it absolutely athletes. not for the athletes. And whilst you do that, yes. I just noticed that the cylinders disappear off there. So I'm going to fix that because I want you all to know about it. Um, calisthenic games was. How do we take the idea of calisthenics and bring it directly to you? Maybe you don't have the time to go to one of our events, to call one of our coaches, to go to one of our meetups, go to one of our meetups. So Calisthenic Games said, if you've got an empty space anywhere or an empty space nearby, we will bring the games to you. 
We will show you all the processes. We'll talk about the five pillars of athleticism. We'll talk about recovery. We'll talk about mental training. We'll talk about nutrition. We'll talk about uh, mobility. And we'll do it in a fun setup where you can all do it as a group. And we'll do it for charity. So we'll say that we bet you to win and all the sort of money that, that's transferred into your fund me page or whatever goes to the charity of your choice. So it's social impact through sports. And it was something, again, that was very close to me because I'd organized a sporting events and when I sort of looked at the communities around it, they didn't seem to be getting anything back. And I just thought there's so many of these, these sports that galvanizes you. And we can sort of learn more about each other through play than we do through meeting each other through networking. Yeah. Um, I just kept thinking, I, we should be able to give back more than what we do. So Calisthenic Games was invented, um, you sweat, I bet, charity wins. But at the same time, it's about knowledge, you know, knowledge is power, bringing you easy ways to exercise pretty much anywhere. Yeah. Um, and to learn, we do fireside chats, we talk to mobility experts, we had someone from the, the um, Paralympics, we had someone from Man City, uh, football, talking about nutrition, we had a mindfulness coach uh, from Mojo Wellbeing, uh, Papillon Luck from Nutrition with, to do with Jet Lag, and just kind of talking through the basic things that we all go through and what you can do that will make that incremental change that will lead to great strides of yeah. change. That's it. I think it's important for everybody to know that. It's just about making small changes, like mm -hmm. you said, you know, in this busy environment of organizing meetings and events, it's those small changes. So, you know, so, you know like you said, posture. Yeah. And it's just about being mindful about, you know, changing one thing at a time. We're not suggesting that you go out and change everything and, you, no. know, you know, go on these nutritional courses or, you know, exercise for hours on end. Yeah. But I think it's very important because you work in such a high stress environment to make the small changes Absolutely. so that they can, they have a really big impact. I mean, Alex, I, I, I don't make the time to exercise, yeah. but I do make the decision of trying to take maybe the stairs mm. rather than the lift. Yeah. I always make sure that if I get a break at any point, that I try and get some fresh air, I try and get outside because I think we're all guilty of working non-stop. Mm. And that in itself then has a detrimental effect on how you deal with stress, how you deal with stressful situations. Mm -hmm. And then that, that just has a, a snowball effect. So yeah. if we make small changes, um, in the way that you think, in the way that you operate, um, then yeah, it has, a, it has a big impact. On it's a major thing, and I think EAs and PAs know this. I know I've had the great fortune of, you know, previously been married to an EA, and I remember I was struggling with my mailbox, and I was getting all these emails about events, and I was getting emails back from venues, and I was getting emails back from suppliers and caterers, and I was trying to put these events together, and she just said, can I show you a simple sort of PA trick that will change your life? And I said, okay. So we're going to create a folder and it's going to say delegate and that's going to go to someone you're going to hand that job over to but another folder and it's going to say ditch and this is stuff that isn't important and you're just going to stick it in the ditch folder and i was like oh okay and another folder called do and that's the stuff you have to do and by doing that one thing it'll affect all these other things that you need to do Three folders. Why have we not talking about this before? Oh, so I apologize. I'm doing that. It's, <laughs> okay, admin chat. it's genius. It's genius. My, my, I, can, I can feel my inbox filling up yeah. after recording this. It's, it's and ridiculous. That, yeah, and it's it's one of those things where you see your inbox filling up, and then actually you do get a little bit digested oh, because you never start. Yeah, but that's a great. I mean, fantastic. Everybody watching this probably already knows this trick, but for if me, you don't, I'm, I'm enlightened. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's brilliant. Um, I wrote this book, The Entrepreneur. It was my first sort of writing. Uh, my first book, in fact, I think I ever wrote, as, as opposed to co wrote co authored. And I didn't expect him to buy the book, so I put my email address in the back and just said, Listen, thank you for buying the book. If you've spent money, um, I'd, I'd like to be able to give something back to you. So it's my email address. If you have any events questions, email me. I didn't think the book would sell 56,000 copies in its first month. I didn't think I'd get, I think I get something like three to 5,000 emails a day um, from people. And it, it was overwhelming. I went into, a, into what they call analysis paralysis. There's an expression. Yeah, yeah, where well, you, you, you try to think of ways to fix it, but you, because you're trying to think of all these answers, you don't do anything. You're frozen in the, the in an ability to, to move forward. So she kind of sat down, went, okay, let's just go through it. This was one take long. Now I live by these Ds and they have made a gigantic difference to my life. I think you all know how to do it. And it was an incremental difference. It was this small thing. Um, if you're in any job in the world, and I guarantee you've heard this in yours, I guarantee you've heard this in yours, 
you would have heard of Pareto's law. Now, some people go, I've never heard of Pareto's law. And then I'll give you the, the sort of common word for it, the 80-20 rule, mm. right? In events, we say 20% of the room eats 80% of the food. The moment those canapes come out, or small plates, there's a small group of people that run over, eat everything. Um, people say, oh, half, you know, eight, if, I, if I can just control this, there's 20%, it'll affect 80% of my job. If I control my inbox, if I can control um, when I get phone calls, if I can control, da, da. start looking at those things. What is the 20% that can make the biggest difference according to yeah. 80%? Another thing I do is something called chunking. And chunking works well with health and well-being. And there's a great YouTube video on chunking where a gentleman wanted to learn how to speak German. He just thought it would be great to have a small child, never going to have the time. He's always wanted to speak German. So every single day for one hour, he listened to something German and then wrote down what he, what he listened to. It's a comprehension. Yeah. Every single day for a year. At the end of the, the year, he went over to Germany for a holiday, invited his small child and his wife over to sort of surprise them, and then spoke German the entire trip. They were blown away by this. Then um, he decided this was, this was obviously worked. Uh, and his wife said, tell you what, I'll give you something that you've probably never been able to do. It's almost impossible. Test your idea. Knitting. And he went on to knit the biggest quilt, I think, in America. And then he started sort of making quilts for trees all over the world. And then, and then but how? And he went, just chunk it. Just be like, okay, for the next two hours, my phone's not going to buzz. All the notifications are off. And I'm only going to do emails. And then for an hour, I'm just going to do all my phone calls back. And then, and in these small increments of productivity, you might only get five hours, but those five hours of solid, I'm only going to do this, and yes, my boss is going to be sending me jobs, but I'm going to prioritize yeah. that. Get back to this. It is going to put the mind at ease to say, we're okay, we have a system in place. And by having the system, things will become easier. I'll tell you another trick that you can use, which, is, which I learned from a doctor. Anyone that's ever watched any TV show knows what a post-mortem is. Yeah. Right? It's on everything, yeah. especially anything CSI. There's the body, tell me about what happened. You know, based on the water in the lungs, she drowned. Based on this massive mark around her neck, she died taking a cell phone call. Um, you're like, whoa, the post one was wrong. It's a mark around the neck, it's definitely a rope burn. What they don't talk about, which every doctor so far I've spoken to talks about, and every surgeon I've spoken to talks about, and every athlete I've now spoken to talks about, is pre-mortem. What can you do at the start that makes everything easier? Which is why doctors have a scrub nurse. And the scrub nurse knows where every single piece of equipment is. And all he needs to know, or she needs to know, is where's the scrub nurse? Or right next to me. The scrub nurse only needs to know one thing. Where's the blades kept? Where's this kept? So he just goes, nine blade. Pre-planning. Pre-planning. Pre That's a pre-mortem. When you get home, you put your keys in the exact same bowl. Simple as that. The morning, okay, where's my keys? Where's my keys? The brain says, I don't the keys are. It's in the exact same place it always is. It's a pre-mortem. It knows exactly. Albert Einstein was famous for doing this. He had an exact routine for everything. And we think Albert Einstein, a lot of you young kids out there probably know what Albert Einstein is. So let's give you a better example. Mark Zuckerberg. I was just about to say Mark Gray Zuckerberg. Great t-shirt, hoodie, blue jeans, blue shoes. That one little change means that he doesn't have to think about one Correct. particular thing as soon as he gets up. Yeah, and it's it done. just makes him more productive. And famously, um, and again, maybe people won't know this, but the owner of Zara and uh, Mango and, not Mango, it's not separate parts, Inditex, which owns Zara, Pull and Bear, um, there's a couple of others, and I'm sure people are watching this and thinking, oh, Stratoveros he didn't mention, and, um, and there's another great female brand. He only wears blue, blue shirt, blue jeans, blue socks, blue shoes. And it's insane. You own all these clothing companies, yet you're telling me you have to wear, it's one less decision to make. In the morning, he gets up, he knows exactly, just grabs them, puts them on, goes out. And we can see this with Steve Jobs, black polar neck, blue yeah. jeans, no belt, sneakers. Um, it's this one thing that makes everything seem a little easier. They say that the body craves routine and the brain feels calm by it. Yeah. So, you know, when it comes to eating, find a couple of meals that work really well for you, eat the same meals. Monday to Friday. Yeah, actually, I mean, um, my wife and I made an incremental change recently. You know, like I said, we are, we've got a very, very busy, busy life, busy home life, etc. Um, and one of the, the, the stresses uh, in our life was, what, what should we eat? Yeah. We want to eat well. You know, we want to encourage our son to eat well. What, what do we eat? So then you would have to try and come up with a meal plan, and then you go to the supermarket. Buy. Um, for those of you who are watching from the UK, we actually and. This isn't, well, I don't have any affiliation to them, by the way. Yeah. But we use one of those meal box. Yes. Um, the so delivery called, systems. Yeah, um, called Mindful Chef. The meals are actually delicious, but it just 
takes out some of the stress Absolutely. of uh, work-life balance yeah. because we don't have to think about it. We still get the the enjoyment of actually cooking the ingredients, which I think helps me to, to de-stress from work. Yeah. Or I might be able to process some things whilst we cook it, but I don't have to think about what to cook. I've got something else to, to, to make. And I think it's about, again, we'll keep, we'll keep bringing it back, make those small incremental changes. changes. And actually whilst it's taken for us, it's taken the stress out of some of the, the work home life decisions that mm. we've got to make, we're eating better. 100%. So I feel better because yeah. we're eating better food. Well, one of the things Mindful Chef does really well is they talk about eating the rainbow. Yeah. You'll see so many colors in your food, which makes huge differences to how the body is receptive to it. And if you were to keep a food journal, that's another incremental change that I would suggest you doing, a best practice, keep a food journal. What did you eat and how did it make you feel? And you go, you know what, today we ate this quinoa, salmon, I don't know, whatever you're a vegan, because vegan is big right now. Yeah. Um, tofu, beans, uh, and I, I felt great, but I felt slightly bloated. Okay, so the next time, try not to have one of those and yeah. just write down, just one. Don't change the whole meal. Don't, oh, I'm never gonna do tofu again. I'm never gonna do black beans again. I'm never gonna do salmon again. Just one ounce, how did you feel? You know, there's a, a great expression by Vincent Barney, he was a massive coach, one of the greatest coaches in the history of the world. He said, if you ain't assessing, you're guessing. Works if you're American, doesn't look good. <laughs> um, yeah, which is true. If you're not looking at your decisions and looking at the results of those decisions, then how do you know what it was that caused it in the first place? Yeah. And I think as humans, we're so quick to change everything. And we're quick to jump on bandwagons. Yeah. You know, the ketogenic diet, the 5-2 diet, the quick in 15, the lean in 11, the six minute ab, the four minute ab, the one minute ab. You know, this influencer said this, Kardashian said this, Jay-Z said this, you know, onto the next one. Um, I think, stop, find out what works for you because you're a snowflake and repeat, yeah. rinse and repeat. And you know what, if you eat well, and this has been proven, six days a week, so Monday to Friday, on the sixth day, have something crazy. Yeah. Remind yourself that maybe a liter of ice cream is actually a bad idea. Eat the liter of ice cream. Write in a food journal how you felt afterwards. Because on Sunday, you will not wait to get back to eating properly. And when you do crave it, maybe Wednesday, Thursday, because the brain's quick to forget, you can look in your journal and go, oh my I God, felt awful. Yeah, I felt terrible. We all can't wait to just lie around, do nothing, catch up on Netflix, eat crap food. We get to Christmas season, we do that nonstop for three to four days, and we're all like, oh, I can't wait for January. Can't wait yeah. to not have to drink. I can't wait to not have to eat every single day all the leftovers at Christmas or my friends are coming over or family's coming over. It's big meals all the time. Keep a food journal. Small yeah. thing, big difference, you know. And, I mean, you might be wondering why what this has got to do with your, your role in events, but I think everything starts with how you feel, 100%. how you decide to react to a situation. And that starts with your health, yeah. your wellness, your well-being. Um, and, you know, choosing to make decisions, I choose not to stress about this because actually mm. I can't change the outcome. Yeah. You know, so by letting things. certain things go, it makes such a big difference. And this all relates to this stressful role that you guys have got, yeah. whether it's event organizing, whether it's your job as, a, as an executive assistant, it all starts with how you feel, how you look after you. Definitely, yeah. And I think that's that's something else. And it's not believing the hype. You know, try, if you can, to, when you hear a terminology, when you hear an expression that repeats itself, ask your basic self, ask the cave woman, cave man inside you, if that makes sense. When your friend says, I just lost five pounds on the keto diet, ask yourself if peeing on a stick <laughs> makes sense to your dietary needs, if eating a 60% fat-based diet that will probably increase your cholesterol, especially your LDL, which is the worst part of cholesterol, up is probably a good idea. When someone says to you, what's your work-life balance? Ask yourself, do we balance walking and breathing or do we just walk and breathe? Okay, so there's probably no such thing as work-life balance. There's probably just life and we just need to prioritize. Absolutely. And not prioritize across the board, but at the given moment. When you're with your kid or with your partner, it's all about them. That's just, that's the priority. 
You're not trying to balance it at that moment. You're not saying, I'm with my kid, but I'm also going to give my wife some attention. Oh, I need to remember the balance between my wife, my love, my wife, my love, my child, my wife, my wife. No, you're with your child, you're about your child. Absolutely. And your wife's there, you're with your wife. And you prioritize in the moment, at the moment. And that's another thing that's vitally important to do with your health and your wellness. This hand that you're with us right now. The Japanese say it's something you carry all the time, so it's an easy tool to relieving stress or bringing down things. So if you imagine your hand and you say your thumb is worry and it stands for all your worries, your forefinger is fear, your that finger, I'm not gonna say which finger that is, I'm not gonna leave it by itself anyway, it's <laughs> anger. Um, then you've got um, sort of, so my apology, so it's worry, fear, anger, uh, this one is self-acceptance and this always drives me mad and it is worrying about it, it's not worrying, it's something with an S, anyway, it's gonna come, come back to me. And then the center of your hand is calm. Now, if you take, if you're feeling something, let's say you're worrying about your paycheck, end of the month, your bills, your deadlines, um, something coming up that you haven't had control of, a client that you couldn't get through, a confirmation of a booking that was really important on one of your events, let's take the worry, grab the thumb, imagine the worry, and just hold it for one or two minutes. That's all, that's all it takes. Just slowly hold it one or two minutes, think about it, breathe, three seconds in, hold it four seconds, out for four seconds. And so what's the trigger to help you process exactly what it is. those feelings? In, 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 in um, slowing you down. And, yeah, yeah, in NP and Neuro Linguistic Programming, NLP, they talk about it as anchoring. It's an anchor. It's something that you can physically grab to handle something that isn't physical. You know, if you if you speak to, there's another big one, there's another great common expression that floats around this idea that we only use 10% of our brain or that the, the mind is is important. And there's a, a, a sort of a joke about that. A um, Someone that studies pure science will say to you, there is no such thing as the mind because we can't find it. It doesn't seem to exist. There's only the brain. And those that are more spiritual will say, well, actually, there is only the mind and the brain is a physical manifestation of the, the mind. mind. Yeah. And it's the same thing, but they're reminding you that this is the seat to most things, and you need to first think about it before you do it. But again, something we've recently learned, thanks to science and thanks to technology, is that the gut actually holds more nerve endings than the brain. So when you have a gut response about something, and you can't quite place it, remember your gut is picking up on millions of small microtransactions that have happened through body language, through little things that the brain hasn't picked up on yet, and saying something's wrong. This environment's wrong, it's uneasy, it's unsafe. And in that moment, do something physical. Remind yourself. And that could be something like that when you're a child, you just think self-soothing. We talked about this with your yeah, yeah. Just putting your hands sort of around yeah. yourself, kind of holding yourself in. Um, they'll say it's bad body language, so maybe you just want to put your hand by your elbow. But again, maybe you want to put your thumb into yeah. the palm of your hand and hold it for one or two minutes and just calm down. There's a terrible film, don't watch it, called uh, Mile 22, Mark Wahlberg. And throughout the film, you see one of the characters just constantly touching their fingers, constantly touching their fingers. And it's a meditation technique. It's a meditation technique that the Russians have been doing for thousands of years, where they simply, one, two, three, one, two, three. They just breathe and remind you. It's as simple as everything has a pace, everything has a time. Breathe through, count it down, so just count it down. Slowing it down. Slowing it down. And I think that's another thing that's vitally important. It's a, it's just something that you need to sort of be smart about, yeah. assembler, smarter event planning. Um, knowing the practices, knowing what's what you need to focus on, yeah. by priorities, looking to see if there's a smarter way. There's a great one. My grandfather was a philosopher. He was a drunken philosopher, he was an alcoholic, but he was a philosopher. And <laughs> my dad was a realist. And I'll never forget my, my grandfather was in his whole he moved for counsel, and he said, you know, uh, it's about hard work, it's about you know being the hardest worker in the room and, and there's no, there's only stairs to success. You just gotta pound those stairs, pound those stairs. And my dad walked in and just put himself a sports car. And we we're just moving out of this area that we grew up in. And he said, no, uh, dad, that's the problem with a lot of people is you think that's the only way. The smart person realizes there was an elevator behind them the whole time. And all they had to do was ask around and turn around. And I thought that was vitally important. That's something I've learned is there are tools out there. More than you realize there are yeah. tools. Uh, intermittent fasting is huge right now, right? This idea that you should fast and what it does, and there are so many benefits of fasting, do check it out. And when you're first starting, it can seem impossible. 12 hours, 16 hours, who's got time to fast like that? And then you find that there's an app, it's called Zero. And not only does it explain what 12 hours are about, or what 16 hours are about in YouTube videos, it explains it really simply, 
but you can send it. And it goes, congratulations, start fasting now. And then it just starts counting down and it sends you a reminder. It says, well done, you did it. Do you want to keep going? Stop now. Click, you hit it. And now it keeps a journal. Tells you how many days you fasted. And you're like, wow, that was simple. Or, you know, you're doing multiple conversations with people on multiple platforms. And then you find out there's Slack. Right? Yeah, and exactly, and yeah. it puts everything together. And actually Slack, I'm assuming like zero, I haven't used yeah. it, but Slack, you know, um, great communication. Incredible. Too. And actually, for up until a certain point, it's, it's free to use. Yeah, yeah. It's really easy. We use it within December to communicate right. between the, the team members. And, and different projects that you have. Yeah, we, yeah we, we wouldn't be with that, to be honest. Mm. Um, so check out Slack, check out Zero. Yeah. Again, we've got more affiliations to these, yeah. by the way. We're just, um, you know, of course, telling you what works for us. Yeah. Um, Evernote. Evernote, Evernote is a great, a great app. Absolutely. Um, I think it's free to download. Yeah. I believe. It's not lost to pay for it. So and, uh, I think yeah, it's free now. Yeah, let's, let's say it's free. Check it out. It's a yeah, great way of check it out. Kind of keeping notes and um, you know turning it into posts, etc. Mm. Um, obviously, there's Assembler, which now here comes the little plug. So, I think one thing I'd like to talk about before I talk about Assembler is it was important to me when we set Assembler up mm. that we solved some of the problems and took some of the stress out of event planning. Yeah. You know, so I run an agency, I saw firsthand how it affected me, how it affected the guys that work for me. Mm. Um, and I wanted to solve some of those problems and you know, use some of our, I sort of make our internal processes available to everybody to be able to use. Right. Um, so you know, you know, everybody hates using spreadsheets for organizing events. You know, trying to create multiple spreadsheets yeah. to you know, or, you know, keep everything together and then you've got emails and telephone calls, etc. So that's where Assembler brings everything together. Forget spreadsheets, forget disparate communication methods, mm. everything's stored within there. And the algorithm connects you to relevant suppliers, um, venues, etc. for your events globally. Um, and on top of that, you can plan multiple events mm. simultaneously, etc. That's why I wish it was around when I was doing sort of more daily events but now I only do maybe 16 events a year uh, in comparison but yeah to have I am using it now but to have something where it's all in one again just like Slack yeah. as opposed to looking for different things yeah it's a, it's a godsend and I think that led into the culture and the organisation as well I mean we we initially called it family first but it's, it's kind of like um, you first mm -hmm. really and everybody has their own personal stresses which they they then have to bring them to work because they, they feel like they need to ask for time off. Mm. Um, and it was important to me as a culture within the organization to make sure that people understood that you look after you first. You need time to sort out, even if it's just one small thing that's causing you stress yeah. that might actually distract you when you're at work, get it sorted. Yeah. You know, don't worry about having to take time out to look after your family, to um, sort something out during the week that can only be sorted out during the week instead of the weekend. Just take care of you, mm -hmm. and then you will take care of everything. Of everything. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's that leads into the fact that um, you know our chosen charity is Mind.org, mm -hmm. which is about mental health. Um, We're actually talking to Mind yeah. about calisthenic games. Oh, really? As we speak. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, yeah, it's a great, it's a great charity, and I think it's um, it's very on topic at the moment. Mm -hmm. You know, um, people are becoming less bashful about talking about mental health, about depression, Absolutely. et cetera. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's completely ingrained into the, the company culture that, I love that it's about taking the stress out of something that is very, very stressful. Yeah. And um, you've got the assembler guarantee. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plug. Shameless. Yeah, so, yeah. Cause it's right there. It's <laughs> like in my yeah, face. Yeah. So, you know, um, I mentioned it. Yeah, so I suppose it is one less worry there. So that's what I was thinking. Um, we've created a an insurance and a guarantee for your event investment. So you book anything through Assembler. Not only are we going to make your life a uh, heck of a lot easier when doing it and less stressful, but um, the Assembler guarantee basically assures that event against cancellation for unforeseen circumstances. So the best thing I can kind of liken it to in the the leisure industry is. Apta or Atoll mm, or Atoll, 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 yeah, where you go ahead and you book a package holiday and you don't really want to book it if you don't see Atoll or Apta anywhere. But people are more than willing to go out and book an event for you know 10,000 up to you know 110,000, but actually not have any guarantees that if 
you know, we live in a crazy world. You know, mm -hmm. there's unfortunately, you know, terrorist attacks happen all the time. Yeah. And you know, duty of care kicks in, and you think, well, I can't. You know, if a terrorist attack happened in a city where you're going to plan an event, mm -hmm. you can't, in good conscience, hold that event anymore because of the risk factor. Absolutely. But then you've lost that event investment. But that's again, that's one of the reasons why we put this in place because yeah. we want the event organizing planning aspect of people's jobs to be as seamless and stress-free as possible, essentially. Yeah. Um, and that's my plug about Assembler. Um, but there's, there's one or more app that we didn't mention, actually. I think it's Calm. Of course, yeah. So there's two things I was going to say. One is Calm, if you have a chance. Calm is incredible. In fact, last year, I want to say it was last year, last year Calm won best app on iTunes. It was voted the best app to use and all it is, is a mindfulness app, which is incredible because you wouldn't think that would beat some of the phenomenal apps out there. Yeah. Tinder, massive shout out. I haven't used it yet, but I keep getting told. Um, Bumble, um, City Mapper. There's so many great apps, yet there's one app about mindfulness, about control, about doing little things, again, incremental things, um, and talking you through being in the moment um, controlling the moment, owning the moment, these countdowns, this simple, you know, one of them is a rain in the background and it's counting down from five and you do feel relaxed and calm. And there's, again, there's a free version, a freemium and a premium, throwing in some words there, uh, models, but calm is incredible. Definitely check out calm. And if you're someone like me who hates FOMO, fear of missing out, and you're booking at one venue and you have a bunch of meetings, let's say it's a day delegate, so you've got lunch and you need to rent some sandwiches and a meeting space, and you just booked it, you've spent this your full budget, you packed, you had to go to your bus and explain why you had to spend a little bit more because you had to get a central location, blah, blah, blah. Uh, check out Mice Office, and again, that's mine, but yeah. it's the whole idea is it's simple. It's a newsletter that just tells you who's giving great deals right now, and it's directly to you. We talk about you all the time, and I think that's the future. I think no one wants to get email anymore. You want to get you mail. Absolutely. You want letters and emails that are about you, that help you get what you need done to help someone else. It's all about relevance. How do you know? Yeah. yeah. Getting to the point, getting to, you know, booking the event as quick as possible, getting to the, you know, the offers that you need with yeah. MySoffers. I think we should talk a little bit about MySoffers because, again, we've been in the events industry for a long time. And as, um, as agents, then, we tend to get, you know, offers, et cetera, yeah. probably more than what, what you do as a corporate, where it's a bit crazy because you guys are ultimately the, the end decision makers, yeah. you know, our bosses as the agencies. Mm -hmm. um, but yet the hotels would email us and, and let us know, well, actually, you, you, the commission that you can earn on this yeah. might be, you know, like five, ten percent more if you book with us, or or you in certain rooms. Exactly. Or we can upgrade you if you book a group booking, or exactly. we can half the price of your transport if you're doing Eurostar and you're doing eight people. We can throw in champagne and a sommelier that will come and explain the thing, or a wine tasting, or a yeah. food pairing, or a celebrity chef that will come out and you think, I didn't know that. Yeah. Or even countries like Portugal doing subsidies to hold yes. events of a certain size. Thailand. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you know, my offers is yeah it's a great it's a great tool to be able to to get yeah. that information which you guys might never have known about either mm. so yeah, go great. to myswaffers.com to sign up um and i think we're about we're about done that's it yeah that's yeah. a wrap up so i think yeah if then if you can get if out of this admin chat if there's two things that you can take away from it three things one sign up for my softwares <laughs> and assembler and assembler um which is going to be the second thing, actually. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's there. Sorry about that. Um, but definitely the most important one is just make one incremental change after listening to the admin chat, mm. no matter how small, so that you can either deal with stress better, 100%. you can live more healthily, mm. um, or you can you know, just be a bit more mindful of what you're doing what's and why you're doing it. Yeah. Like we said, you know, thinking on purpose, with purpose. Um, and if you'd love to have us on again, do let us know. And if there's certain something in health and wellness that you want to talk about, or in simple tools that make your life easier, that make you a bit smarter, that makes your job simpler, okay. let us know as well. I'm sure there's a comment section, probably down there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, you can call, you can contact me directly, at David mm -hmm. at assembler.com. 
And I think your email address is Jason. Yeah, something, something. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, just think, I don't want another email. Yeah. I just think I literally most like, what do you hear from you? Don't want another email. I'm on social media at Penthouse Lord, or just write uh, when you subscribe to my office, you'll get an email back. Yeah, you know, just email me back on that. Perfect. Thanks very much for listening. We've, we've really enjoyed having a chat. I hope you guys have enjoyed listening. Um, thank you very much, and be mindful. Be mindful and do one thing a day that changes your life.